Hi everyone, Quiveen here from the comfort of my kitchen. In today's video, we are going to be taking a look ahead to the month of May. We had a quick look at some of the things coming up in May in the previous video, which was more about the meteor showers at the end of April, beginning of May. But in this video, we will really look more into the month of May. We can see here on the 1st of May, or well, that's the 30th of April here on the 1st of May. The sky is in two different. We can see that Leo's moved a little bit more to the southwest. Uh, we can see Carvis is coming up to south here at, at just about quarter to 11. So reasonably late and we need to go reasonably late just to get the sky dark enough once we're into May. If we push forward closer to mid-May, uh, back to the night of the full moon more or less, here we go. Well, it's still quite bright and we absolutely have light from the full moon there. But we can definitely see a glow of sunrise there as late as quarter to 11. Uh, we do have very long nights in the winter here in Ireland, but they are complemented by very short nights once we get into summertime. So we can see here the glow of sunset has pretty much completely disappeared by half 11. And having to wait until half 11 to go stargazing, you know, that's a downside. If you're into astronomy, of course, it's nice to have a little bit of extra daylight to do things during the day. But it's hard to use all of the daylight hours during the summer here in Ireland. The day does get very, very long. But we're starting to see Scorpius here by the time the sky is dark. We don't even have to wait until morning time, which means the glow of the Milky Way is stretching up through there. And there's the summer triangle. Now, I can't really count this as the summer. The summer triangle sort of rose as the sunset, but the sunset is, of course, very late here in Ireland. So that has an effect as well. We're definitely getting into summer. The summer triangle is pretty much with us all night long now that we're into May. Of course, it will be even more prominent as we come into June and July. We're moving towards morning time here and we're getting different constellations popping up into the sky. We can see that Sagittarius is way over here by the south. The Milky Way should be quite prominent by the time the sun is starting to rise. Uh, we're here at half three. The sun won't be up until a little closer to four. There we go. There's Saturn definitely getting visible once we're into, this would be late May. We're here on the 20th of May. Saturn definitely, definitely getting visible even in the city. In fact, if we push a little bit back, uh, if we get a little bit darker, pushing back towards nighttime, here we are just about four o'clock and Saturn's definitely there. Quite low in the sky still. We'll have to wait a little bit longer for Saturn to get higher in the sky. Mars, you know, we're starting to see Mars, but even if I push right through to the 31st, uh, Mars will be uncomfortably close to the moon there, but we can see that Mars isn't very prominent. By the time it's visible, there's definitely that uh, orangey glow, that pinky orange glow of Mars, uh, of the sunrise surrounding Mars. So it's going to stay quite, quite difficult to observe. We'll have a quick look at what constellations those planets are in. Uh, so Mars is there in Pisces and there's Saturn in Aquarius. This would be Capricorn. And of course, we have our famous constellations in the summer triangle up here, Lyra, uh, Cygnus and Aquila. If we bring up the images, you can see them a little bit clearer. We're also coming back to the time where the uh, square of Pegasus is going to be reasonably prominent uh, by the time we're through to morning time, but also while the sky is still reasonably dark as we come to the end of May, pushing back to the beginning of May, and we can see that that's not quite as true. Around here, close to the night of the full moon and the peak of the Edda Acroids, which I will get back to, uh, we can see that by the time the square of Pegasus is really above the horizon, we're starting to get a little bit of that glow of sunlight there already. Here's Andromeda with the Andromeda galaxy being, uh, let's see, around here somewhere. And down here we have Triangulum with the Triangulum galaxy being around there somewhere as well. If I bring up my uh, deep sky object markers, there we go. There's the Andromeda galaxy and the Triangulum galaxy should pop up if I take a closer look. There we go. Um, it is, of course, quite close to the glow of sunrise, so that's going to make it a bit harder to see. But another one of our close neighbours, our closest neighbour, and then the next one over, slightly harder to see. We will move out into the countryside. Of course, you will always get a better view in the countryside, regardless of the month. We'll move back to sunset, just so that we're looking at the... Uh, the stars you're most likely to see. Uh, if you regularly get up before sunrise, then you're going to have a good view of constellations like Pegasus and Scorpius and the Summer Triangle. We are starting to see the Summer Triangle, as I said, by the time the sun goes down, but in early May, it won't be as high in the sky quite as early. We'll have to wait until later in May and closer to summertime. Here we go, moving out into the countryside, an excellent dark sky. 
why settle for less? We might as well go for excellence if you can control how much light pollution you see. You might as well get rid of all of it. Uh, so we can see here, even with a lot of sunlight still in the sky here at uh let's let's make it 10 instead of 9.59. Uh, with a lot of sunlight here in the sky at 10 o'clock, it's still quite, quite bright. But we've got a very clear view of constellations like Leo, like Gemini there, Virgo. It's never really a clear constellation, but there's Spica, the brightest star. You might be able to see the kind of um, kite shape. And in the tail of the kite then is the star Arcturus. That really is the uh, shape of Buetes. It is meant to be a person, but the lines of the constellation do look very, very similar to a kite. And of course, as I mentioned in previous videos, there's Corona Borealis. Roughly here, we're going to get a new star thanks to a recurring nova not a supernova but a nova that's going to happen this year at some point we might need to wait until september before it happens but it is coming up we've got the very clear shape of vega there even before the sun has fully set and as we push a little bit later thanks to being in the countryside we've got that lovely view of the milky way here early may as early as midnight and we have this lovely view of the Milky Way here. We've got uh, the shape of Cygnus. You can pretty much see the shape of Cygnus with that uh, star Alberio, that binary star. Uh, there was a video recently on this channel about binary stars, and Alberio is one of the best. If you have a good enough telescope, one star will... I might as well take a look <laughs> while I'm talking about it. One star will not only turn into two stars, but two stars of different colours. And I hope that's coming up on the screen here. But this one's blue, a little blue star, a little hot, bright, white, blue star, and a bigger, more orangey, golden companion, uh, the main star of Alberio. So those, that's a fantastic thing to take a look at down there in the Milky Way. Of course, the Milky Way is a very, very rich area for observation. But, you know, quite early, it seems. It seems already, even in early May, that the nights are getting incredibly short. Uh, here we are at half four, and the sky's already brightening up considerably. The teapot of Sagittarius is fully above the horizon. You can really appreciate that teapot shape before the sky gets too bright. Scorpius, of course, we're still missing the tail. That's ducking under the horizon. That's not really visible for us here in Ireland. Saturn, definitely quite visible here if we're in the countryside, followed by Mars, and there's the moon very, very close to new. Now, later in May, uh, Mercury will get more visible. I'll just need to check if Mercury reaches its greatest elongation in the morning or in the evening. Uh, Mercury has two different greatest elongations, uh, one to the west, which we see in the morning, and one to the east, which we see in the evening. So there's Mercury. So I know exactly where it is. And there it is really, really close to the horizon. So Mercury is suffering from the same problem here as Saturn and Mars were suffering just a, just a few days ago, really, or a few weeks ago. Here we are later in the month. Yeah, that's pretty close to its greatest elongation. It doesn't seem to be getting any further from the sun there. We can see it moving out and then looping around to come back. It looks like it's not really going to be visible for us here in Ireland, even when it's at its greatest elongation, which is a little bit of a disappointment, but it's partly thanks to the time of the year and the angle at which we're seeing the sun rising and setting. If you're in a different country, it won't be as much of a problem. And at other times of year as well, even in Ireland, it won't be as much of a problem. This is the kind of sky that we've got to look forward to. Even though the nights are getting very, very short, there are some fantastic things becoming prominent at this time of the year. I briefly talked about the Eta Acarids in the last video, but I do want to go over them again. They are a feature of the May sky. So we can see here they're only providing four meteors an hour, which it isn't great. As we move back to their peak around the 5th and 6th, we can see it's up to 40 feet. These numbers are approximate. Uh, you never really know how many meteors you're going to get in the sky until the meteor shower happens and you observe them and you count them. That's really the only way to make sure predictions such as this, you know, there's always going to be some variation. I think we need to move back a little bit to get them up to their peak of 50. So we can see they're peaking while the radiant is under the horizon, but pretty much on the night of the full moon. And a wonderful time to see the glow of the Milky Way is also a wonderful time to see the Eta Acrids. Now here's the Eta Lyrids, which will be peaking later in May, but their Zenith hourly rate is never going to get crazy high. So they're not as good as the April Lyrids, but 
at the same time, the April Lyrids were pretty much blocked out by the glow of the moon, so we didn't have much chance to see them at all. Whereas the Eta Acarids, they're going to be peaking closer to the new moon, which is going to make things a little bit better. And that's a variation that happens with all meteor showers. Meteor showers can be great when they're not competing with the moon at producing very many small meteors, whereas if they are... Um, if they're the kind of meteor shower that produces few but very bright and occasionally explosive meteors, it's less likely to be obscured by the moon. Uh, different objects will leave behind different types of material, and that will affect the kind of shooting star or meteor that you see in the sky. This particular meteor shower, it comes from a trail left behind by Comet 1P Halley, or 1P Halley, uh, depending on how you pronounce it. That, of course, being the first uh, kind of confirmed periodical comet. Its period is very, very long. It only comes around uh, every few, you know, every hundred years or so. It is a rare one, but it leaves behind this trail of material. And that's what we get to see with the Acarid. So that is coming up this month, especially if you can get out to a dark part of the countryside. You don't have to wait for the radiant to be above the horizon to see some of those meteors in the sky. So that's just a brief overview of a few of the things that are coming up in May. Mercury isn't going to be very visible despite the greatest elongation. We have a lovely meteor shower towards the beginning of the month and towards the end of the month, the nights are really, really getting short. But even it'll be interesting things to observe and we are waiting for a nova in Corona Borealis. So any chance you get to go and take a look at the sky could be worth it. Uh, the nova in Corona Borealis is definitely something that is rare and getting to see a brand new star popping up in the sky is nice. But that pretty much brings us to this quick overview of May or brings this quick overview of May to an end. I do hope you enjoyed it. If you enjoyed this kind of video, then please do like it, but also subscribe to this channel because I put up videos like this every single month and videos vaguely like this uh, twice a week, occasionally in Irish. So if you're interested in that, please do subscribe. And if you'd like to read some of this information, you can go to queenbeanscontent.ie, my website. Otherwise, I will see you next time.